Hi, my name is Jess MacArthur, and I'm a technical wash advisor at IDE Bangladesh. One of the things I get to do in my job is to help design product-based solutions for the rural poor around water, sanitation, and hygiene in unique collaborative programs across the country. Today, I'm in Nilfarmani District, Northern Bangladesh, and I'd like to share with you how our iDesign team has been working in proofs, profitable opportunities for food security, a Kingdom of the Netherlands funded program with three consortium partners, ECO, BOP Innovation Center, and IDE, to create a unique solution to a not so unique problem. The iDesign team uses principles of human-centered design to develop solutions for problems we hear and see in the field. This is quite backwards to the way things are usually done. We want to see products that are desirable for consumers, viable in the market, and technically feasible. Often we see garage inventors from the West who develop solutions for problems they hear secondhand, and while these solutions are technically feasible, they are often not desirable or viable. We do things a bit differently around here. We like to start with people. In human-centered design, there are three phases. Hear, create, and deliver. In the here phase, we spend extensive time diving into the manifest and latent needs of the bottom of the pyramid consumers. What consumers say they want and need, and what we, as subject matter experts, know they need. In February 2014, a small team, including myself, took off for two weeks of scouting across seven districts in the proof's working areas. We took extensive notes and began to recognize theme areas that offered opportunities for design solutions. One of these areas included two well platforms. While 90% of families in the northern part of the country have their very own shallow tube well, the platforms to ensure the safety and security of these wells often cost the same as the well itself and are not accessible to the common household. Approximately 80% of the families have broken brick chips or cloth at the base of their tube well, but nothing to protect the actual well. Ironically, only the very poor have platforms as the NGO and government subsidized wells are installed with a platform. In May and June of 2014, we came back to the field and dug deep into the behaviors, businesses, and normal practices that surround tube well platforms through focus group discussions, interviews, and observations. Key insights were pulled out of the research and later refined into design criteria. The team determined that we needed a platform that meets six unique design criteria. The platform needs to be acceptable, aspirational, and beautiful. Affordable, less than 1,000 taka, or about 15 US dollars. Appropriate, the platform needs to drain easily and seal the tube well effectively. Available, utilizing the ring-making capacity of existing entrepreneurs. Accessible, utilizing the sales hubs of existing entrepreneurs. And finally needs to have good awareness, utilizing the sales capacity of the entrepreneurs and having a strong demonstration effect. Based on these six criteria, the team entered the create phase. In this phase, the iDesign team undertook several rounds of rapid, low-fidelity prototyping in the DACA offices to develop a core concept. Next, we moved to a deeper round of higher-fidelity co-creation with producers who are locally based entrepreneurs and have existing knowledge of platform making and are often hired by NGOs and the government to install traditional platforms. One of the WASH experts working with Improves Project, Babal Al Ray, began working with Golun Mustafa, a local businessman, to further develop this initial design. By moving the co-creation back to the field and relying on experts with extensive knowledge of both the product and service delivery side of local production, the design would continue to develop in a human-centered approach. Babu Lal and Mustafa worked for four months finalizing the design together. During the design process, the team went through two design iterations. Originally, the thought was to keep the platform as low cost as possible by keeping the size of the ring the same as the common latrine ring. By using the same size of ring, the cost would be significantly reduced because the entrepreneurs would not need to get additional tools. This is how the platform came to get its name, Ring Paka, or Ring Platform in English. After receiving consumer feedback on the 36-inch diameter design, the team was surprised to learn that the consumers would pay almost double, from 600 taka to 1,200 taka, to have a platform that was 45 inches over 36 inches. This would not only increase the business case for the entrepreneurs, but would also make the product more desirable to customers. At this time, the entrepreneur added red color dye to the final layer of cement, giving the product its most recognizable quality, its red color. The second design iteration came as one of the ring pockets was used extensively at the entrepreneur's business plot. Mustafa realized that without scoring the top of the ring, after several months, the cement would separate from the ring and break the paka into two parts. 
This co-creation and rigorous use has ensured that the design remains the strongest possible design from both the technical feasibility and market viability standpoint. Currently, we are in the deliver phase. Since January, the team has trained 40 latrine entrepreneurs on this project. By opening their businesses to include two well platforms, these entrepreneurs have essentially doubled their potential business. So far, 10 of these entrepreneurs have ordered and received the tooling required to make the 45-inch ring. In three months, 86 ring paco were sold, and at least another 20 ordered. Each training and installation offers the opportunity for communities to see and hear about the benefits of ring paca. Often, orders for new platforms are placed on the spot, and an entrepreneur works from one village to the next. Rita Begum watched today's ring pocket installation and decided that she wanted to purchase one for her family. Rita told our team that she had thought about buying a platform before, but after seeing this platform with its color and prestige actually being sold in her area at an affordable price, she decided it was a must for her and her family. While there is still much work to be done to secure a scalable model for the training and branding of Ring Paca that doesn't rely on project funds, the human-centered design process took all of six months from here to deliver and represents a great model of both centralized and decentralized design. A team of community members, entrepreneurs, designers, and subject matter experts worked well together to create a design that is viable, feasible, and desirable. In fact, all six design criteria were met. While the Ring Paca is not as robust as traditional platforms, it matches the robustness demanded by consumers. If a household only wants a platform for 10 years because they have plans to move the well before then, why put in a 30-year platform? At less than 1,500 taka, the platform is affordable to almost every household. This is up to one-third of the price of existing options. Additionally, we are seeing communities pool resources to purchase platforms for ultra-poor families and widows. By utilizing the building blocks that a latrine producer is already familiar with, we are able to double the business scope for producers without extensive training and capacity development. The latrine producer only needs to purchase a new mold for the larger ring, but is not required to purchase expensive equipment. By encouraging producers to sell this product at a very local level, people all over the pilot region have access to a platform instead of waiting for an NGO or government to provide one. The platforms are beautiful, aspirational, and capture the attention of the community. Picking a color that resonates with the community allows for a great demonstration effect for product marketing and also makes the product fun to install. Using human-centered design, the team has made a product that is viable, feasible, and desirable, and it incorporates local-level business. The iDesign team is proud of the way the Ring Paca has been developed and hopes that our story inspires human-centered design solutions around the world.